Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Saturday, April 20th, and today is day 197 since October 7th. Um, over this past weekend, a significant milestone was passed. 34,000 people, more than 34,000 people have been killed in Gaza, and the number of injuries reported is more than 77,000 people. Famine looms, which is made worse by the acute shortages of shelter, medicine, and clean water, which continue. Almost everyone in the enclave now is depending on donated food after more than six months of what the war is calling Israel's war between Israel and Hamas, and what many are calling Israel's war on Gaza. Homes have been destroyed, and Gaza's economy is decimated. 100% of the students in the entire enclave are not going to school, and that's just beginning to talk about the problems that are happening there. The U.S. administration and the White House have talked about significant progress in aid um, being making it into Gaza. The amount of trucks, according to Israeli authorities, U.S. and humanitarian organizations, have said that delivery should return to pre-war levels. That's at 500 trucks a day. But on Friday, only 250 trucks entered the enclave, according to UN figures. And that was the highest number in the entire month of April thus far, 250 trucks a day. That's only half of what the pre-war numbers were, and the needs then were a lot less than they are now. A series of Israeli measures promised to sm smooth the flow of aid. Those have stalled. This included direct access to aid in the north of Gaza, a new system for the military to coordinate with humanitarian groups to ensure their safety after the seven World Central Kitchen aid work were killed in airstrikes. Some trucks have been allowed into North Gaza through new crossings, but these have not been opened to the United Nations, which is the group that delivers the vast majority of aid in the North. Hospital authorities in Gaza said that an Israeli airstrike on a house in Gaza's southernmost city of Rafah killed nine people, six of them children in the past 24 to 48 hours. Qatar has been the um, chief negotiator in terms of talks between Hamas and Israel. They're reconsidering their role as a mediator. They say that their work has been subject to, quote, political exploitation, end quote. And the prime minister of Qatar, Sheikh Mohammed bin uh, Abdul Rahman Al Thani, said that last week um, they are reconsidering their role as being mediators. Hamas is also looking to shift negotiators. Um, they are aware that that would uh, cause further disruption, but the talks from their perspective are faltering already. Um, and uh, Hamas and Israel have not been able to come up with a deal to end fighting in Gaza or to release the hostages. And the suffering in the enclave deepens by the day. A source said, quote, talks have already stalled again with barely any signs or prospects for them to resume anytime soon. And distrust is rising between Hamas and the negotiators. In addition, the situation is spiraling in the West Bank. According to the Guardian, Israeli military raided a refugee camp near the northern town of Talkaram on Friday and killed a child and three militants. Haaretz reported that the Israeli army said security forces killed 10 Pal Palestinian militants near Tolkarum, and eight Palestinians were arrested, according to the army. Eight soldiers and one border police officer were wounded in the operation. Since October 7th, more than 460 Palestinians, including militants, civilians, and children have been killed by Israeli fire in the West Bank, which includes Israeli military and settler attacks. In Israel, 50 people around demonstrated in front of uh, a detention center, the Sid Timon Detention Center, where detainees from Gaza are being held. Um, the 50 or so demonstrators are protesting condition conditions there. A doctor at the facility warned in April that the conditions there endanger the detainees' health and risk violating international law. According to the Haaretz newspaper in Israel, 27 detainees from Gaza have died in custody um, at that particular military Israeli facility since uh, October 7th. The situation between Iran and Israel, um, you know that Israel uh, attacked Iran uh, in the latest of um, since the attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus. A senior U.S. official cited by AB News, ABC News said that Israel's Friday strike near Isfahan targeted an air defense radar site that helps to protect Iran's Natanz nuclear facility. The official said earlier assessments um, show that the strike damaged the site, but that an appraisal has not been completed. And one of the goals was not to, according to an analyst, was that the goal was for Israel to show their capabilities, uh, not to um, further escalate, but to show that they have the capability to attack with inside Iran. Um, there were also attacks uh, in Iraq. One member of Iraq's pro-Iranian popular mobilization forces was killed, and eight were wounded in an explosion at a military 
military base south of Baghdad, according to a military statement uh, on Saturday. It added that no drones or fighter jets were detected fighter jets were detected in the airspace before or during the blast. The U.S. military denied reports of involvement. Um, as far as I know, no one has claimed uh, the explosion. Hostilities have continued on the Lebanon and Israel border, uh, and it's been reported that three Hezbollah operatives were killed in an Israeli airstrike. The House um, here in Washington, D.C., passed a $95 billion foreign aid package with funds for the Ukraine and Israel with bipartisan support. Republicans joined Democrats to support the measure um, in the package that was assembled by the House Speaker Mike Johnson, Republican from Louisiana. Johnson was defying far-right members who, um, because of his separation of the Ukraine, Taiwan, uh, there were four bills um, that went to a vote, um, and Republicans have threatened that they might uh, put forward a motion to oust him as the Speaker of the House because of it. So the Israel Security Supplemental Appropriations Act was approved by the House today, which approved $26.4 billion in the aid for Israel. It's called HR 8034, and it passed by a wide margin of 366 to 58. More Republicans than Democrats voted for the bill. And the Senate is expected to take up the foreign aid package early next week. And President Biden has said that he would sign it into law. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas of the Palestinian Authority said he is reconsidering bilateral ties with the United States because of the U.S. veto of the Security Council vote on the Palestinian bid for full membership of the United Nations. I wanted to close just by saying, you know, please continue to pray and work um, towards the asks uh, that we've been talking about, a comprehensive ceasefire, you know, an end to ho all hostilities, a release of all hostages, immediate and adequate humanitarian assistance into Gaza, the broader peace process. And then there were three cases I wanted to highlight that are affecting Palestinian Christians. These are individual cases. You probably heard the story of Shadi Hori. And if you're interested, since I wrote these notes, I actually got an update from the Ramallah Friends School um, and got a direct account uh, from his mother through the Ramallah Friends School. And so I'd be happy to do a video, video just telling the story of the case of Shadi Hori. But he was from Jerusalem and he was arrested more than a year ago, then put on house arrest. He was in an Israeli prison, then house arrest. There was a court case. He's continuing to have court cases. And I'd heard that his court case did not go well. Um, he was accused of having lynched a car in Jerusalem. Um, and he's approaching uh, his 18th birthday. He'll be graduating from high school soon. And so pray for him and his family and his legal troubles that they might be brought to an end. Um, there was a friend of his who was... Um, forced into a confession uh, who has since then recanted numerous times and the court is not believing the recanting of that confession. Uh, another case is the story of the Christian Palestinian academic Nadira Shalhub Kavornian. Um, on March 12th, um, Shalhub Kavor Kavorkian uh, had been suspended from the Faculty of Law at the Hebrew University following her remarks on Israel's Channel 14 News. She accused Israel of genocide in Gaza and cast doubt on some of the reports about sexual violence that were perpetuated by Hamas on October 7th. And then on April 18th, Shalhub Kavorkian was arrested on suspicion of incitement in Israel, and she was brought to a police station um, in Mevaretz, uh, Zion, where she was transferred to a crime-fighting unit for investigation. Um, she was kept in custody, according to a press release, um, that was calling for her release from detention. Um, it described that, you know, as a Hebrew University professor and an internationally renowned feminist scholar, um, Shalhub Kavorkian was arrested um, by Israeli police at her home in the old city of Jerusalem on the charge of incitement to violence. The police raided and searched her home, and she was undergoing harsh and dehumanizing interrogation. Her lawyer said that the charges against her were serious. Um, Palestinians in Israeli detention suffer physical, emotional, and mental violence. Um, she holds Israeli and U.S. citizenship, but has been subject to violent repression and harassment by Hebrew University for speaking out against what she believes is genocide in Gaza. Furthermore, she was suspended from her teaching duties in March and then later reinstated when it became clear that there was no basis for allegations against her. Um, so pray for Nadera Shahub Kavorkian. And then um, we just found out that in the last day, the Jerusalem Magistrate Court just ordered her release. Um, and so that was just announced in the last day. Finally, the last story is of the Palestinian Christian uh, young woman named Leyan Nasser. Reverend Dr. Munther Itzak shared um, about her having been arrested uh, in the last week or two. She's been put um, in administrative detention, which means official charges are not brought against her. It means there's no trial. She's been put in administrative detention for four months, which is renewable. It used to be administrative detention could be for up 
to 10 years at a time. No charges were presented. Um, he says she is one of thousands of Palestinians um, who are held in detention without charges, which includes more than 85 women. Um, according to Beth Salem, Israel routinely uses administrative detention and has over the years placed thousands of Palestinians behind bars for long ranges of time for months, if not years, without charging them, without telling them what they are accused of, and without disclosing alleged evidence um, to them or to their lawyers. So when we call for the release of prisoners, we're calling for those who are held without due process, like Leon Nasser. Um, Munther uh, Itzak had spoken to her family, um, and it calls for our prayers for Leon and her family, pr prayers for justice, um, and that we would advocate for the release of thousands of political prisoners. Pray also for the release of hostages who've been held for by Hamas now for 197 days for all who have lost loved ones. Pray that efforts towards peace might make headway, you know, in the next minutes, hours, and days ahead. Uh, might peace come quickly.